They are the most distant human-made objects that exist. Launched in 1977, they crossed the orbits of the giant planets, revealed worlds we had never seen up close, and now sail through a darkness that never sees dawn. And they keep drifting away, silent. Almost everyone has heard that Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have left the solar system. Well, not exactly. Because in the sense that matters for gravity, they still belong to it, and most likely always will. Before we go on, if this topic fascinates you, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. It helps the channel and lets you know about upcoming videos. To understand why, we need to separate boundaries that many people mix up. There's the boundary of the solar wind, the boundary of magnetism, the boundary of plasma, and there's the boundary of the sun's gravitational domain. The first is the heliopause, the limit where the solar wind, a stream of particles emitted by the sun, loses strength and is contained by the pressure of the interstellar medium. That's the barrier Voyager 1 crossed in 2012 at around 121 astronomical units, and Voyager 2 crossed in 2018 near 119 AU. Beyond it, the ionized gas the probe encounters no longer feels the sun's breath. The particles and magnetic fields now have interstellar origins, but the end of the solar wind is not the end of the solar system. It's only the end of one of its layers. The other boundary is far vaster and more patient, the sun's gravitational domain. Gravity isn't like a bubble with an edge. It's a field that extends to infinity, weakening, but always there. The sun holds under its influence not only the planets and their moons, not only millions of asteroids and trans-Neptunian objects, but also a virtually uncountable population of icy bodies that form the Oort cloud. This diffuse sphere may begin at something like 2,000 astronomical units and extend out to 100,000 astronomical units, a desert of dormant comets that are occasionally perturbed and plunge toward the inner solar system. As long as an object is on a trajectory that, even subtly, remains tied to the sun's gravity, we are still talking about the solar system. And that's where the Voyagers remain. When we say they have entered interstellar space, we're right in the context of plasma and cosmic rays. The signature of the particles detected change. The magnetic fields revealed the transition. The noise of the solar wind faded behind. But from a gravitational point of view, the probes are only in the outskirts of the neighborhood. Think of a city with many layers. First you step off the sidewalk, then you leave the block, the neighborhood, the municipality, the state and only much later do you reach the national border. The heliopause is like leaving the neighborhood. The Oort cloud is the national frontier. The Voyagers have barely made it out of the neighborhood. Scale is everything here. One astronomical unit is the distance from Earth to the Sun, about 150 million kilometers. Voyager 1 is a bit beyond 160 astronomical units heading toward the constellation Ophiuchus. Voyager 2 follows not far behind in the direction of Telescopium. That sounds enormous and it is. But the likely start of the Oort cloud, around 2,000 astronomical units, is more than 10 times that distance. The outer limit, at 100,000 astronomical units, is hundreds of times farther. The Voyager's speed, around 17 kilometers per second, lets them cover roughly 3.5 astronomical units per year. At that pace, just to touch the inner edge of the Oort cloud would take something like half a millennium to cross it entirely, tens of thousands of years. And that assumes they keep to relatively clear paths, without encounters that could alter their trajectories. But aren't they at escape velocity? Yes, relative to the sun's nearby gravity well, they have enough energy not to return to the inner system. They're on hyperbolic orbits, which means they won't fall back toward the sun and will keep receding indefinitely. However, escaping locally isn't the same as fully leaving. The sun's gravity has no point where it becomes zero. There are regions where other fields dominate, but fully becomes a fragile term when we're dealing with forces that never disappear completely. Even when they're tens of thousands of AU away, there will still be a trace of solar acceleration shaping their path, however small, until the tidal gravity of the galaxy as a whole, of nearby stars, or of molecular clouds truly begins to compete. This distinction between heliosphere and solar system is crucial. The heliosphere is a fluid magnetic phenomenon, a bubble of wind and magnetic field that swells and shrinks with the sun's activity cycle, deformed by the speed at which our system moves through the interstellar medium. During stronger solar activity, the bubble can expand. During minima, it can contract. It's irregular, with a nose and a tail, like a comet in reverse. 
Crossing it is like stepping out of the warm breeze zone of a campfire on a cold night. The air outside is different. The temperature changes. Dust grains behave differently. But the campfire still lights up the entire field. Scientifically, the Voyager's crossing of the heliopause was historic because it put us for the first time in direct contact with the local interstellar medium. Plasma detectors heard the hum of electrons excited by distant shockwaves. The cosmic ray instruments showed the switch in the population of high-energy particles. The magnetometer measured the change in the field's orientation. It confirmed that there is, indeed, a dynamic boundary, a skin around the sun's wind. But none of that changes the fact that, gravitationally, the sun's domain reaches far beyond. There's another detail that deserves attention. The electrical power that feeds the probes is nearing its end. Each Voyager carries three radioisotope thermoelectric generators that turn heat from the decay of plutonium-238 into electricity. Over the years, their output has declined. Instruments have already been turned off to save power. Subsystems have been rationed. Sometime in the 2030s, they'll lose the ability to run any experiment or even the transmitter. From then on, the Voyagers will remain intact but mute a pair of human artifacts traveling blind, no longer reporting. That won't stop them from being part of our system. They will continue their inertial flight through the sun's realm, entering and passing through the Oort cloud like crossing a fog that takes thousands of centuries. So they can never leave the solar system? It depends on how strict you are with words. If we take solar system to mean everything gravitationally bound to the sun at some scale, the practical answer is no, because that bond has no wall where it ends, only a tail that thins out. If we define leaving as passing beyond the heliopause, they've already left. If we define leaving as getting past the Oort cloud, the answer stretches into tens of millennia and still doesn't settle the fully part. At the most rigorous conceptual level, fully would be like saying, no longer feeling anything from the sun, something gravity's math doesn't allow. They will probably be forgotten by humanity long before anything like that could happen. Another interesting point, deep space trajectories aren't ruler straight lines drawn on a frozen map. The galaxy itself drags everything along in orbit around its center. Neighboring stars pass by again and again, their gravitational fields plucking at Oort cloud comets. Clouds of gas and dust exert subtle tides. Over tens of thousands of years, small perturbations may bend and slightly redirect the Voyager's roots. There are calculations projecting close encounters on scales of tens of thousands of astronomical units, with stars millions of years from now. None of this cuts the link to the Sun. It simply adds a chorus of influences on the same gravitational stage. Why does this subject move us so much? Perhaps because the Voyagers crystallize two ideas that define our species. The first is the urge to explore, to build something small, fragile, and precise, and launch it to see what lies beyond the curve. The second is a sense of origin. No matter how far you go, there's a thread that anchors you. Saying they will never fully leave doesn't diminish the achievement. It enlarges its meaning. The solar system isn't a gated community. It's a hierarchy of influences that spread through space and time. The Voyagers have moved beyond the wind, but remain under the light, a light that may barely warm them now, yet still organizes their paths. And that's why when we hear that the Voyagers have left the solar system, it's worth adding quietly, in a certain sense. In another, deeper and longer lasting sense, they remain, and will remain, children of the sun, messengers crossing layers of wind and plasma, but never stepping through a door that doesn't exist. The universe doesn't draw doors, it draws gradients. And along those gradients, our spacecraft keep going, stubbornly stitching distance with patience. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.